The dedication of the energies, the resources, and the imaginations of all peaceful nations to a new kind of war. This would be a declared total war, not upon any human enemy, but upon the brute forces of poverty and need. The monuments to this new war would be roads and schools, hospitals and homes, food and health. We are ready, in short, to dedicate our strength to serving the needs rather than the fears of the world. I speak of peace, therefore, as the necessary rational end of rational men. I realize the pursuit of peace is not as dramatic as the pursuit of war, and frequently the words of the pursuers fall on deaf ears, but we have no more urgent task. But I also believe that we must re-examine our own attitudes as individuals and as a nation, for our attitude is as essential as theirs. And every graduate of this school, every thoughtful citizen who despairs of war and wishes to bring peace should begin by looking inward, by examining his own attitude towards the possibilities of peace towards the Soviet Union, towards the course of the Cold War, and towards freedom and peace here at home. I refuse to accept the view that mankind is so tragically bound to the starless midnight of racism and war that the bright daybreak of peace and brotherhood can never become a reality. I refuse to accept the cynical notion that nation after nation must spiral down a militaristic stairway into the hell of nuclear annihilation. I believe that un unarmed truth and unconditional love will have the final word in reality. This is why right temporarily defeated is stronger than evil triumphant. Mr. Speaker, I thank the gentleman from Massachusetts. I could not agree more. How in the world can the Congress of the United States, which has an obligation to declare war, continue to advocate its right to debate our young men and women going to Afghanistan to die? But I feel the pain of my mistake of giving the authority to the previous president to bypass Congress to send our young men and women to die in Iraq and Afghanistan. Mr. McGovern is right. If President Obama believes it's necessary in the next couple of years to increase the numbers, then let him come to Congress so that we can meet our constitutional responsibility. Provoking Kim will not make us any safer. It will only raise the temperature on an already volatile situation. As everyone in this chamber knows, the, a conflict on the Korean Peninsula would be catastrophic. Let me be clear. A war with North Korea would put millions of lives at risk, and the threat of nuclear weapons only heightens tensions. Diplomacy is the only answer. Direct talks remain our best chance of resolving this conflict peacefully. We must also remind the President that he does not possess the power to declare war without congressional approval. It's up to Congress, not the White House, to debate and vote on military action. For 14 long years, our nation has been at war. Our people are sick and tired of war. This resolution simply opened the doors to bring American soldiers home. Let me be clear, we must maintain a strong national defense. We have a responsibility to protect our borders, our diplomats, and Americans at home and abroad. But the end of terrorism is not fine through the barrel of a gun or more boots on the ground. More weapons cannot stump out the root of cause of terrorism, and more bombs cannot eradicate the seeds of hate. We must counter the consequences of violence 
by demonstrating that diplomacy and the spread of true democracy are the most effective weapons against terrorism. Yes, I said it again. Our people are sick and tired of war.